Children's cancer is very rare, but still, each and every day, there's an elementary school classroom worth of children diagnosed. 80% of those kids can be cured. That means one out of five will die from their disease. That's still way too many. Today starts the real day that we start making a bigger difference than we've done before. Today we're having some of the best pediatric cancer experts around the country come together to join efforts uh, with Patrick Sunshine and Phoenix Children's to change how we treat cancer. How are you? Good to see you. Welcome. For me as a scientist, um, I was naive at the very beginning, thinking that all I needed to do was uh, be part of an amazing hospital system and make discoveries. And it suddenly became clear that in rare diseases, like pediatric cancers, um, that was going to take a very long time. It's painful to hear, but they do a, uh, what they call a spinal tap and infuse chemo through the spine. That's what we do today. If we could cure can childhood cancer, it would, be, it would be amazing because I see little kids that are, every single day that are two years old or younger they don't know anything else. They just know pain and being here, and I couldn't imagine, and I don't think that that's right. Like, children shouldn't have to go through this, especially really little one, well, anyone here in this hospital. It's not, it's not okay. I love my mom and my grandma. I love my pets. We had always known that kids get cancer for very different reasons than adults. They don't smoke, they don't go out in the sun. At this particular moment in time, during the last uh, five years, essentially, where technologies emerge that you can that suddenly open up the doors to really understand the underpinnings of the biology of a pediatric cancer, integrate that with the biology of how a kid is a kid, suddenly transform the field for us. I've been a dancer since I was two and that's pretty much been my whole life. I'm not very good at sports, no, but I love dancing. We're gonna understand cancer better than ever before. We're taking the most advanced technology, the most complete approach to a pediatric cancer patient ever undertaken, and making this now known to the nation and bringing together different institutions who all understand the importance of trying to make a change in how we treat kids with cancer. Well, when you look at the members of the consortium that were at the table today, uh, you know, it's a who's who of pediatric cancer. It's going to be something that's never been done before, and this unique group is going to hit our goals and is going to make a difference for children. I can tell you how honored we are to have um, on my left, Mayor Greg Stanton, on my right, uh, Senator uh, John McCain. Uh, Arizona is the first state to really take on this challenge that we are now launched since January of the Cancer Moonshot 2020. Each individual child that has cancer has their own, oftentimes, unique disease. That's what we're learning. And the Moonshot is really recognizing that and embracing that and saying, well, if we can understand each individual tumor better, then we can start to be smarter and take individual treatments for an individual's uh, tumor rather than just lumping them all and treating them all the same. And I'm not going to give you a science lesson, but the only way I can do it is through a science lesson, is say, we've been treating us with radiotherapy, chemotherapy, monoclonal antibody therapy, hormonal therapy, target therapy, checkpoint immunotherapy. These are all the therapies that we have now. But amazingly, nobody asks the very fundamental question, where are we treating and which piece of the cell are we treating? Cancer now, I recognize, I believe, and I think many other people join me in that belief, is in fact a normal evolution of human physiology. We are producing cancer cells as we're sitting here in this room. 
but the body has its own natural protection to recognize it and kill it. My vision of the future is we'll look back on how we treat cancer right now and say it's very barbaric. The moonshot is really exciting that we're gonna harness your own body's immune system's natural ability to recognize good or bad. When I see some of those slides, I see the cancer cells being destroyed by the immune system, et cetera. I think we are on the, the cusp of legitimately curing cancer. So the DNA, RNA, protein, and protein network, that's the test we just launched called the GPS cancer. That's the test that Independence Blue Cross, for the first time in January, approved commercial payment. Our moonshot then is if we now change forever the care of cancer patients, by doing the GPS and getting complete battlefield awareness, getting this thing called the new epitope, these mutations that we've now chased, and activate the dendritic cell, give yourself a blood transfusion and drive what I call the memory cell. You drive the memory cell, you've driven then long-term remission and potentially to the cure. Because of this Moonshot initiative, we now have at our fingertips technology that wasn't available across the board for all our patients. Ways to understand the genome. What is a genome? That's the code inside a cell that's driving that cancer cell. So every child is looked at in a very unique, in-depth way, and it allows us to tailor their therapy in a way that is much more likely to work for them. Because we're, we're zeroing in on what's causing your cancer. We need to validate this, we need to bring the entire country alongside with us. This can't be done by any one organization. This is not about a drug, this is not about a company. This is about changing our whole paradigm and wrestling, you know, with dogma. And I think, think Senator, you may be known as a maverick, so we'll be fellow ma mavericks here. Well, thank you, Doctor, and uh, I must say I'm a bit humbled in the presence of these individuals who are Except the mayor, of course. That, <laughs> I, that, uh, and this coalition is, is really incredible. And I'd like to give some, uh, a great deal of credit to our vice president, Joe Biden, who has been integral in this effort for a long time. The Moonshot Initiative, including a pediatrics component, is a game changer. It's a transformational moment for the field of pediatrics. I can't tell you as mayor of this great city how proud I am that Phoenix, our city, will be, is the first city to support and join the Cancer Moonshot 2020 and Pediatric Moonshot 2020 effort. This is a game-changing and life-saving announcement that you are making here today in our city. This incredible effort is not science fiction. It's, it's science reality. Uh, through Nantworks and the technology that's available, we believe that within the next three to four years, we may be able to identify at birth by studying the genetics of these patients and their family members who is going to develop cancer so we can intervene. If you take a child, let's say with medulloblastoma or leukemia who's five years old, and we save their lives and we do it without toxicity, Think of what we'll be adding to our world. Through the cooperation of this group, I believe we will see transformational change in the care of children, and I think we will make this timeline. And I know I speak for all of us, there is no better way that we can honor the children and families we've cared for than by this project. Thank you. So I'm very glad to state that as a self-insured employer, the 30th largest employer in Arizona, uh, we will be extending uh, genomic testing uh, coverage to our self-insured group. And uh... I want to acknowledge Gene Assisi, if, if I may, Gene. What Michelle and I and Bob would like to do is today is announce that we'll establish the Bob Assisi Award for the doctor, uh, the clinician in the country uh, that actually makes the most impact for children's cancer as a result of genomic sequencing. So I'd like to announce that. Well, this initiative has unfolded at an unbelievably fast pace that none of us in pediatric oncology are used to at all. It's the most exciting project I've ever been involved with, and I think will probably be the most beneficial for the children and families we care for. How do we get to the moon? How do we achieve the goals of the Pediatric Cancer Moonshot 2020? And how do we get our colleagues, first across the country, then hopefully across the globe, for all the lives of all the children that we're treating?